It was not front page news on January 13, 1914, but there on page two, nestled between the B.H. Levy clothing ad and the society section, was a small headline announcing something new for the city. For 42 men of, of various backgrounds signed up to be members, charter members of the Rotary Club of Savannah. The January weather was typically gray and chilly, which hampered the downtown business district, and many retailers were offering sales to boost their post-holiday quotas. Local banks were advertising aggressive lending rates, and the city council was discussing enlarging the police force to combat increasing crime. Savannah, like the rest of the state, continued to recover from the economic woes left by the Civil War. Political reform was being championed on numerous fronts, and women's suffrage had been gaining momentum since the late 1890s. Racial tensions were escalating as minorities felt left out of the political process. Little did the city of 70,000 plus realize that World War I loomed less than six months away. There was a lot of turmoil and a lot of concern as to where the United States was going during that time period. This was the time when, for the first time in American history, the urban population was, was becoming larger than the rural population. So the cities were growing. And so in cities, people were coming together to say, you know, how do we deal with these growing social problems? How do we make our cities a better place to live? Yet, in spite of the uncertainty of the times, Georgia's first city enjoyed a unique level of comfortable prosperity and serenity. Well, Savannah in 1914 was a booming place. Uh, Savannah was the second largest cotton port in the United States, and it was the fifth and maybe sixth largest uh, port in all of the United States. Its banks had as much in the way of deposits as, as, as Atlanta banks. Cotton was king of the flourish, so much so that its influence was felt even in determining the meeting time for the new club because Rotarians could not meet until the Cotton Exchange closed. And so they got together at 2 o'clock and ate until 3 o'clock. Such a thriving business climate set the stage for the organization of the city's first Rotary Club at an initial meeting in the DeSoto Hotel located on Bull and Liberty Street. You could not have picked a better location for a club that would represent the entire city of Savannah. The DeSoto was the grand hotel for the city of Savannah. It was a centrally located place for the meeting of the club. And I think it's really special that the Rotary Club today still meets in the same building where it was founded. Now, yeah, they all looked pretty much alike. There were a lot of white men that were in there, so there was an opportunity for women and African Americans as there was today. But what other organization in town where you would have had Protestant and Catholic and Jews, people from all different walks of life coming together in order to make the city of Savannah a better place and to do so with the, with the idea that friendship uh, is important and building those relationships is important. We're gonna move our city forward during this very turbulent time. Historical accounts record that John S. Banks, a piano distributor, and Henry J. F. Ludman, an architect, were the driving forces behind bringing the national organization to the city. In his acceptance speech as the club's first elected president, John S. Banks said that, a Rotary Club is, to my mind, a first-class example of a collection of modern, up-to-date, live young men who believe in making the world move. His words would echo through the next century. The club took a real interest in young people and youth, and not just the goody two-shoes youth, but they also worked with the detention center, the juvenile detention center. There's a wonderful photograph of thousands of children in front of the old Lucas Theater. That was just one Christmas that they treated them all to a movie and gave them all shoes. You might want to back up. Bethesda is a continuous thread to the Savannah Rotary, a thread that John Banks first spun. And club members became mentors of those boys. Every year the club met at Bethesda. They had work days out at Bethesda on the farm where the members would all come out and help with projects around the, uh, the home. Through the years, the Rotary Club, like the city whose name it bears, would continue to grow and thrive. What's true today was started back then. Rotarians get things done. I'm as a outward symbol of our desire for Rotary to build roads and bridges, we have the Rotary Wheel, which you'll now see erected in the median at Bull and Liberty Streets. But before that, it was in the middle of a fountain in Port Wentworth, 
right there on U.S. Highway 17, which was the gateway to Savannah in 1925. It stood as a welcoming symbol to the new era of automobiles, as well as the horses and mules could still refresh themselves as they were pulling carts into the city. But while the wheel was a symbolic contribution, a more substantive project brought the club's minds and resources together. The Rotary Club of Savannah helped build the road to Tybee. John S. Banks was a road commissioner before he was elected president of the Rotary Club of Savannah, and he understood that process of getting governments to issue bonds to build roads. So the Rotary Club really went after the county and the state of Georgia to talk to the right people. They organized committees, and they got everybody on board, and they got bonds issued to be able to build a road to Tybee. Evidence of Rotary's generosity is clear today. The clock at City Market, the Daffin Park revitalization, and the lighting of the downtown squares. Several of the present day landmarks can be attributed to the vision of Rotary great and restaurateur Herb Traub. Traub's tenacity and determination for making Savannah more hospitable and a better place for all citizens are legendary. He's a man of vision. His vision included his ability to have big ideas, his ability to carry out those ideas, his generous nature, and his love of Savannah. When he found Rotary Club of Savannah, it all fit together. You look at the things that he was a part of, there were certainly leaders before Herb that carried that torch, that wanted to make our community better, and they used the Rotary Club of Savannah to do that. Uh, but Herb has his fingerprints on so many things uh, that our club did within our community. A lot of us looked up to him as the ideal Rotarian, and he lived the idea of service above self. Rotary sort of incorporated Herb's presence, and Herb incorporated Rotary's presence. And there were many others, like Charles Hurdy, who, after he established University of Georgia football, came to Savannah and pioneered the science that brought the paper industry to town. Colonel George C. Marshall was ours while he was in command at Fort Screven. Later, he would become General Marshall, one of the most influential Americans of the 20th century. And Alan Gaynor, whose love of rotary still courses through our veins. A, a, a wonderful presence uh, who really had the, sort of the heart and soul of the Constitution inside himself but who loved Rotary so deeply, who loved this community so deeply. These are the kind of guys that, uh, that know what this, this community uh, needs and, and just steps up to, to the plate and, and uh, pitches in and puts their money up and puts their uh, brawn behind uh, the whole program. The spirit God has given us is no cowardly spirit. Perhaps the secret to the Rotary Club of Savannah's longevity has been its ability to keep up with the times. In the fall of 1990, the first woman, Sister Mary Faith McKean of St. Joseph's Hospital, would be added to the role. The move to add women would demonstrate the club's openness and ultimately its maturity. We had one member stand up and talk in favor, and one member stand up and, and say why he thought that it was unwise to change the Constitution of 1914. Well, the, the vote, the measure passed, the motion passed. Six weeks later, the first woman was presented. And who was the one that presented Sister Mary Faith of St. Joseph's Hospital, but the member who had opposed changing the Constitution of 1914. And it was absolutely wonderful. And he said, you know, I've had many daughters, and I was in the military, and I learned when policy changes, you stand up and salute, and you embrace that policy. From Pinpoint via Ohio came the club's first African-American member, an addition that brought no controversy and no opposition. In the early 1980s, Bill Haynes, a retired architect from Ohio, returned to the area where his great-great-grandfather had become a free man. Bill really represented that history of this town, this community, and he, he knew it, he was proud of it. The qualities that drew Mr. Haynes to the Savannah Rotary are the same qualities that have attracted many of the city's best and brightest. When you get an opportunity to sit down at the table and get your cup of coffee and get your food, and if you are willing to open up and have a conversation, then you'll find that one of the strongest aspects of our community, of course we have a very strong giving side of our community, but one of the very stronger, uh, strongest aspects of our community 
a lot of the business leaders that are, that are at work. Uh, Tatiana, I just want to say that it took, as I understand, two years for you to become an American citizen, but it took Scott 25 years to get into downtown Rotary. Just to get into the <laughs> Probably no one speaks to the value of GRSP better than Scott Center who was so taken with the program that he married one of the students. While not every GRSP student finds true love, the program does enrich the student, the Rotary Club of Savannah, and the world. You know, there's just all kinds of little, I guess you could say treasures, that you gain from having somebody you know, with you from another country for a year. To see how they gravitate and, and really truly appreciate the importance of what volunteerism and service is all about. And um, I have found that the three students that I hosted have all gone back to their countries and really implemented that whole concept. General Jack McLaughlin was a Korean War veteran, a Vietnam War veteran, and a Savannah Rotarian of the highest caliber. Hopelessly outnumbered at the Battle of Chosin Reservoir, McLaughlin surrendered to the Communists in order to get medical attention for his decimated troops, spending three years in a North Korean prison camp where he was tortured and beaten. He went on to serve in Vietnam and in retirement headed the campaign to build Savannah's Vietnam Memorial in Emmett Park. When I read about him, particularly in the Korean War, what he did before he was captured, it told me what a wonderful, wonderful human being as well as a great, great Marine. McLaughlin's service above self is model and motivation for the Savannah Rotary's unshakable support for the American military, as evident today as in the times of General Marshall and General McLaughlin. And having a select number of military commanders within our club reminds the members constantly of the presence and the importance of our military. And nothing represents service above self any more effectively than our military. In fact, our Rotary has had representatives in every war and conflict since its founding. Perhaps our most creative participation came through past President David Rosenblum and Carolyn Trosdell who arranged for a well to bring water to the people of Kabul, Afghanistan. They would travel some uh, 30 minutes by donkey to fill up as many buckets as they could. So it, it's life changing. You know, when you have access to fresh water, that's, it, is, it completely changed that, uh, that entire village's lives. All of those families viewed us and, uh, and frankly, Rotary and Americans as, as heroes for, for what we did for them. When we come together in our small way and make contributions, then the effect is enormous. Carolyn also teamed with past president Steve Stevens to bring together all of the area Rotaries in a fundraiser aptly called Play It Forward. The Rotary Foundation is the recipient of monies raised through performances by area Rotarians, some of whom would have been equally comfortable on the national stage. And being a Rotarian myself, then I'm going to really uh, pour it on for the, for the other Rotarians. Our Savannah Club supports many worthwhile causes. And the Rotary Foundation connects Rotary Clubs all across the world. Because Play It Forward started in order to support the Rotary Foundation, I've learned a lot about the work that Rotary does around the world. And it's very nice to be involved with a group of people who are actually confronting issues that we as a community could not confront alone. Today, Rotary continues to maintain its long history of leadership, counting top business, civic, and community professionals in its ranks. In Savannah, there's not a more recognizable mark or membership than the Rotary Club of Savannah. There's a privilege that goes with being a member and an expectation that goes with your behavior as a member and the opportunity that it provides you uh, to, to interact with other business owners, business leaders. You've got the chieftains of industry basically uh, at the Rotary Club of Savannah. You've got the leading bank presidents, you have you know, uh, oil company owners, you have 
other individuals that uh, contribute. Not all of them are loud and, and want to let everybody know they've done this, but we all know they're doing it. And um, it just makes a huge difference. Without these people, Savannah would be a very different place. It's about helping your fellow neighbor, and we do that as a community, I think, better than anywhere I've ever seen. And I think that extends the Rotary Club. Our members are in the club, and they're involved in the community. Maybe it's not always a Rotary project, but there are many, many different projects that our members are involved in. I can think of many members that make a huge difference in our community. Throughout these many years, we Rotarians have continued to rise to the challenge of our first president and to serve truly. One can only wonder what those first Rotarians would think of the success of the last 100 years and the 2014 celebration year. Two and a half years ago, when talk of the centennial was first underway, the challenge before us was how do you pay tribute to 100 years of service and at the same time maximize the potential for service in the future. So that's really where we started thinking about a whole year of celebration. Next year, when Casey Hurst brings Tucker to the park, she won't have to lift him over so many obstacles or watch him so closely to protect him from the traffic of the park and the danger of the streets. Next year at this time, Tucker and all area children will enjoy a gift from the Savannah Rotary to Forsyth Park. Working with the city and working with Mike and working with Swan, we're able to come up with a new footprint uh, that actually expands where they are currently right now and so that we can have a fully boundless playground for all kids with disabilities to not only play and have compliance with ADA, but also work and play with mainstream kids as well. Live Oak Public Libraries have always represented opportunity to the Savannah community. But next year, that role will be enhanced by seed money provided by Rotary in the form of 10 $1,000 grants awarded to creative nonprofit endeavors. While it seems like a small amount of money will have a profound difference on our community and be able to help a lot of people beyond just what the Rotary does as its members. None of this would be possible without the generosity of numerous companies and individual Rotarians. You can show how proud the members are of its club and they were so willing to give both corporately and individually. It was a very humbling experience going through it. As you know, Rotarians uh, are, are very generous and donate of their time and their money and um, so we've been, able to, we've been able to do a good job. Service above self, the Rotary motto has clearly been demonstrated time and time again. But ask any Rotarian and they will attest to the lasting friendships and bonds that have been forged through their involvement that make them proud to be associated with this club. It's the people, the connections, the friendships you make and the true friendships. And uh, just knowing the people and knowing you can count, call on people and you can count on them to help you in any way possible. It brings the business community together in a way that really connects with the rest of the community. We can come up with ways that we can work together and make a difference in our community. That our club is made up of the leaders in the community, whether business or nonprofit. My uh, ancestors were charter members. What resonates with me uh, on an ongoing basis is the club projects that the club takes on each year to improve um, the life of Savannah. When I began to arrive a little earlier than I normally did and I realized the number of people who were already there in the meetings and sitting around the table and enjoying the fellowship and I think that's really a principal value of the Rotary experience. Savannians in general live uh, uh, through a code and that code that is, is really summed up real well in fairness and goodness and beneficial and, 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 and those are the things which, which make a decision in business. You know, if you can't be fair, then it's almost not worth doing. And today so often we're divided, people with different political interests or other things that drag people apart, but Rotary has had this wonderful standing, pulling everybody together for a common interest, service above self, and the insight has withstood time. It's good for there to be a reminder and a regular reminder about service to others. It parallels what we as a company, service above self, we, we, we believe that as a company and it fits so well with Rotary. So as the Rotary Club of Savannah enters its next century of service, 
the future has never looked brighter. My trainer gets to end the 100 year and I get to begin the next 100 years. The playground and you know, the gifts that we're gonna do and really leverage off of Rotary, our, our Rotary Club of Savannah's 100 year, I think it's gonna just be a continuation of all the great things that they've done in the past. People in this organization all have one thing in common. They love this community and they personify service above self. So the people that stepped forward to take charge just jumped in, took charge, and they've done a great job. This is going to be a great year. Happy birthday, Rotary! Here's to a hundred more! Morning, Mike. Papers in. That's more like it.